Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to do a formula to batch calculation. We'll cover non-unity calculations, the language of formulas, normalization, the formula to analysis dialog, supplying and resupplying oxides, material ordering and material oxide sourcing, KNAO versus K2O, NA2O, and side-by-side -side reporting. Many textbooks present glazes as formulas instead of recipes. Their authors speak the language of formulas when discussing glazes and relate fired properties to the presence, absence, amount, and interplays of the oxides. They assume that you will select appropriate materials to source each oxide and that you know how to calculate the right amount of material. For example, what material do you want to supply CAO from? and how much is needed. This process can be tricky. I will first work through an example where everything works according to plan. Then I'll consider a tougher one. You cannot just type a formula into Insight as a recipe. Why is that? Recipes express parts by weight. Formulas compare numbers of molecules. Insight's recipe list can only contain parts by weight. There's a special dialogue to convert a formula into an analysis, which technically is a recipe of oxides by weight. I have selected recipe 1 and chosen Enter Formula in the Calc menu, and have keyed the formula into the Convert Formula to Analysis dialog. Now I'm going to click Done. Insight converts the formula into an analysis and puts it into the recipe list and then calculates the formula and puts it in the formula list. To set things up, I want to make sure calculation type is set to RO Unity for Recipe 1 and No Unity for Recipe 2, where I'll be building the batch. Why No Unity for Recipe 2? If Insight imposes Unity each time the recipe changes, all the formula numbers will be bouncing around. Furthermore, the supply button needed for this process will not be available unless the recipe is set to no unity calculation. I need to determine which oxides to satisfy first. It's easy to oversupply some oxides if I introduce materials in the wrong order. I'll use the most complex material, the one supplying the most oxides, first. I'll use feldspar to source sodium and potassium, then wollastonite or whiting to, supp to supply CaO, Dolomite for MgO, kaolin for Al203, silica to round out the SiO2, and zinc oxide for ZnO. First, I want to supply sodium and potassium. I'm going to use generic soda feldspar to satisfy the Na2O and generic potash feldspar for K2O. Remember that generic materials do not exist in nature. For this demonstration, however, they're a good starting point. I'll use a real-world material later. I will point out also that I'm still using the Lessons Materials table. I need to unselect this checkbox. I want to see the K2O and Na2O listed separately. I've selected Recipe 2. I'm building it there. I've also selected the first blank line in the recipe list. I have entered soda feldspar. I just typed soda F in the lookup blank and clicked update. Now I have soda feldspar on a line with no amount. I need to click the line also since it moves down automatically each time I add a material to the list. Instead of keying an amount, I'm going to click the supply button. Insight displays the supply oxides dialog. Notice that only oxides supplied by this material are available and Insight shows the relative amounts of each that the material contains. I've clicked the Na Na2O option button. Insight fills in the molecules needed blank with the amount of Na2 in the formula of target recipe 1. The molecules present blank shows how much has already been supplied by other materials in the recipe under construction. Currently none. I'll click Done. Insight calculates the right amount of soda feldspar to supply 0.1 Na2O. 
Notice that the Falspar also sources Al2O3 and SiO2. Now I'll supply K2O. I'll click on the next empty recipe line, key Potash, and then click Supply. Notice I don't have to click the Update button before the Supply button. In the Supply dialog, I'll click the Option button for K2O. Then I'll click Done, and Insight calculates the amount of potash felspar needed to supply 0.15 molecules of K2O. Now I need to supply MgO from Dolomite. I will click the next blank recipe line, key DOL into the lookup blank, and click the Supply button. In the Supply dialog, I've selected the MgO option button, and now I'll click Done. Here is the result. Insight has calculated the right amount of dolomite to supply 0.05 MgO. I have three oxides matched now, and part of the requirements for the others have been supplied, and thankfully not overshot. Next, I'll use the same process to supply CaO using whiting. But notice the supply oxide dialog. As before, Insight knows how much CaO I want by looking at the target in recipe 1 but it also knows how much has already been supplied by other materials. I'll click Done to establish the whiting amount and then supply the ZNO from zinc using the same process. Now the formula and recipe look like this. I've supplied all the fluxing oxides in the exact amounts needed. Now we need alumina. Kaolin is highly desirable in many types of glazed recipes because it aids suspension dry hardening, and other working and application properties. 0.4 molecules of Al203 are required. Only 0.25 have been contributed from other materials. I'm going to click on the next available recipe line, enter kaolin in the lookup blank, and click Supply. In the Supply dialog, I'll click Al203 as the oxide to supply, then click Done. I've done the same thing with SiO2 using silica as the supplier material. The formulas now match. Notice recipe 2 totals 379.59. This is the exact weight at which a non-unity and unity formula are identical for this recipe. We call this a normalized recipe. I could now use the retotal item in the calc menu to retotal it to 100, but I'm not finished. The feldspar I used was generic. I looked it up in the materials dialog. Here it is. Notice the numbers are nicely rounded. Unfortunately, real-world feldspars are not so simple. Here's an example of a real feldspar. Almost all feldspars supply both K2O and Na2O, and almost never in the proportions you need. So you have to be satisfied with matching the total of the two. You get other fluxes also, in this case CaO. I will therefore check the KNAO checkbox. This tells Insight to combine the Na2O and K2O totals in the formula list. I'll use Custer Feldspar in the place of Potash and Soda Feldspar. First, I'll manually sum the total of the two Feldspars. It's 136. I'll make sure Recipe 2 is selected and delete the potash and soda feldspar lines by selecting each and clicking the Delete button once to zero the amount and again to remove the line. I'll click the next blank line in the recipe and enter Custer Feldspar with an amount of 136. If we compare these two formulas now, you'll see that while they're pretty similar, there is a significant difference in the amount of KNAO contributed. Now I've selected the feldspar line and I'm going to fine tune the amount of Custer using the increment and decrement arrow buttons until the KNAO matches. I'm also going to check the three decimal buttons since this is a high total recipe where material amount changes do not impact formula numbers as much. I stopped at 160 feldspar to get a perfect match on the KNAO. Or is it perfect? Notice what happens if I uncheck the KNAO checkbox for a moment. Again, the individual amounts of K2O and Na2O do not match, but their totals do. This is the reality of using feldspars. Fortunately, K2O and Na2O have pretty similar effects on glazes. Notice that the Al203, SiO2, and CaO are now all oversupplied. 
because of the Felspar increase. I'll resupply them now. I'll click on the AL203 line in the formula list. Selecting this line does not really do anything. I just clicked it as a reference to what I'm doing. If you teach Insight, you'll want to do the same. I'll click the KOLIN in the recipe and then the supply button. As you can see, it is also a resupply button. I've clicked the AL203 and notice that Insight shows the molecules already present as if there was zero kaolin. I'll click done. Now I have the AL203 matched up again. Then I'll do the same thing with the SiO2 from silica and CaO from whiting. Now the formulas match again. This exercise helps us appreciate how different feldspars can be in their chemistry. The recipe totals 379, so I'll retotal it to 100 by choosing Retotal Recipe in the Calc menu. And then I'll round it off by choosing Round Amounts in the Calc menu. Now I have a 100 recipe total, at least almost 100. During the process of rounding to a tenth, an over or undershoot of 0.1 can happen. But there is another problem. What happened to the new formula? It doesn't match anymore. The problem is here. I need to set recipe 2 back to RO Unity. Remember that when a recipe total changes, so does the whole non-unity formula. Here's the formula list again. It looks good. Wouldn't it be nice to print a side-by-side -side report of these two recipes and their chemistry? I've done it here using this item in the report type menu. It compares the recipes as well as the formulas, analyses, and mole percents. Insight has templates for its reports in the templates folder, so you can change the layout and content of reports. Now, can you follow my example with the feldspar and substitute a much more chemically complex ball clay for the kaolin? The ball clay will give a completely different character to the working properties of the glazed slurry. You might think this process should be more automatic. But there's no way a machine can choose the best materials in every situation. Inside would create batches with the correct chemistry, but they might be expensive, from difficult to get, or inconsistent materials, or have poor application, drying, or suspending properties, or exhibit problems with high LOI and gassing, etc. These considerations are complex and beyond software, at least now. That's the end of this lesson.